Lesson 2.2, System Specification. Let us take into consideration the different objectives of this lesson. Number one, identify the necessary system specifications required of your computer. Next is check materials according to specifications and tasks. In today's world, computers have become very essential in almost every aspect of life. We simply can't do without computing. But how do you buy a computer that will help you complete tasks effectively and efficiently? The following are the important things to consider before buying a computer. Number one is doing some research before purchasing a PC can help you identify the right one for you. The next one is make sure your computer supports the system requirements. System requirements includes the following. Operating system. Example of operating systems are Windows XP, SP Slash 2, or Mac OS or operating system. The next is processor speed. You should have to take into consideration also the processor speed. Like for example, Pentium 4. 3.2 GHz or PowerPC, uh, G5, 2.0 GHz. Then the memory or the RAM, well, 512 MB, for example. Next is graphics card. Should have installed uh, an ATI Radeon with 256 MB video memory. Next is hardest space. Of course, you should have to consider uh, at most the hardest space of your pc for example 80 gig available space then the last one is io ports does your computer have usb ports firewire serial ports parallel ports scsi ports vga ports and dvi ports for example a computer game may require your computer to have windows 10 as an operating system so here are the system specification that at least your computer may have the following. Number one is at least it has a 2 gigahertz processor, 512 MB of RAM, 64 MB graphics card, and at least 500 gigabytes of hard drive space. So if your computer does not meet all of these requirements, the game will not run very well or might not run at all. It is just as important to check system requirements for hardware devices, right? So another example, if you buy a printer, it may require either Windows XP or Mac OS or the latter. It may also require a USB port and ATMB of available hard drive space. Then, um, if your computer does not have any USB ports, you will not be able to physically connect the printer, right? If your machine does not have Windows XP or Mac OS or the latter, the printer drivers may not be, may be incompatible with your operating system, of course. So this means that your computer will be unable to recognize the printer. Most hardware and software products have the same have the system requirements printed on the side or bottom of the product packaging. So you should have to take note on that if you buy a brand new item. So when you are shopping for computer software or hardware, it is a good idea to first find out exactly what your system specifications are and write them down on a piece of paper the important information to record. I'll repeat, these are the necessary minimum requirements that your computer have. Operating system, the processor speed, the memory or the RAM, the graphics card, the hard disk space, and the I.O. ports. So by recording these specifications from your computer, you will be able to make sure that your computer supports the products you are buying.
System specification is a big consideration in order for a computer to run and work properly for the most efficient way. Here is a sample system specification of a laptop computer. The illustration here uh, shows the system specification of a computer or a laptop computer with um, Windows 10, Windows 10 Pro as the operating system. And as the processor, we have the Core i5 at 1.6 gigahertz to 1.8 gigahertz. Then the installed RAM is 8 gigabytes. And the system type is 64-bit operating system. So this is an example of a system specification uh, being used in the uh, laptop computer. In broad terms, the performance of a computer depends on four factors. So the speed and the architecture of each processor or the central processing unit, which is sometimes uh, we call it shortly as CPU, then how much random access memory have or the RAM, its graphic systems and its internal hard drive speed and capacity. It is also important to most users will be the specification of its internet connection, especially nowadays that we are using or internet connection is our dire need. So most computer users and in particular those working with a lot of photographs, music files, or videos should also think about the most suitable storage devices they will need in order to keep and back up all of those uh, valuable data. So I'll repeat in summary, the performance of a computer depends on four factors. Number one, the speed of a computer's processor, the architecture of a processor, of a processor, the next is Kashi, then front side bus, uh, the speed of the front side bus. So we will discuss them one by one. Number one is the speed of a computer's processor. Technically known as its clock speed. It is measured in gigahertz or capital G, capital H, small letter Z, gigahertz. With the fastest modern processors currently running, at up to 4.7 gigahertz. So far, the fastest or the latest um, clock speed is 4.7 gigahertz. However, for most computing, uh, computing tasks, including web browsing, sending emails, word processing, and spreadsheet work, any processor running at 1 gigahertz or more remains perfectly sufficient. Meaning, even if you only have 1 gigahertz, uh, still, it is okay for uh, for your PC. But most probably, uh, it is a good idea to have a clock speed of higher than 1 gigahertz, like 4.7 gigahertz. So for applications such as video editing, 3D graphics, uh, and power users playing computer games, higher processor speed is highly required, of course. So CPU performance is now determined by far more than uh, row speed alone. Intel made this very clear when it introduced its system of processor numbers. These provide an indication of a processor's architecture, cache, and front side bus speed, in addition to its clock speed. So it's not only the clock speed is being given consideration, but the rest that I have mentioned earlier is also taken into consideration. Next is the architecture of a processor. It is the most important uh, factor to determine its performance and refer to its basic design and complexity. Some processors are simply more sophisticated than others. With Intel producing basic processors called Celerons and Pinchums. The Core 2, the Core i3, Core i5, and Core i7. So if you have heard all these things, this is referring to the architecture of a processor. With the last of this being the most powerful. So meaning 
uh, the one we mentioned for i7 is the most powerful among uh, those uh, processor architecture that i have mentioned so the processor's cache and front side bus speed determines a computer's overall power let's proceed to the third one Cache is a form of a very fast memory integrated into the processor chip and used to store up instructions so that it has to slow down as little as possible between tasks. It is measured in megabytes or MB, right? With the low-end Celeron process processors have as little as 0.25 MB of cache or uh, in KB, it is equivalent to 256 KB. And a high-end Titanium's having up to 24 MB. So the more cache, the better, though high levels of cache still come at a very significant price. Of course, the price must coincide with its speed. Let's proceed to the last one. Number four, the front side bus speed or the FSB, front side bus. It is a measure of how fast a microprocessor communicates with the computer's main circuit board into, uh, into which it is physically connected. The higher the measure, the better for overall, overall performance. With FSB or front side bus speed currently ranging from 533 MHz up to 1600 MHz. Computers with little RAM have to keep moving data to and from their hard disk in order to keep running. So meaning, uh, from time to time, the data that has been temporarily stored in the RAM will be transferred into the or keep into the hard disk so that it will keep on running. So the more RAM a computer has, the faster and more effectively it will operate. So those are the necessary requirements that your computer have. Thus, we can expect an efficient performance while in use of our computers. But how could you check the system specifications of your computer if ever you already have an existing computer units at home? So the following are the steps on how to view the system specifications of your computer. Here, number one, Click the Windows Explorer folder. The image that I have attached in this video, uh, the one being circled here at the taskbar, the Windows Explorer uh, folder. So that is the one uh, you have to click. Then after clicking that uh, Windows Explorer, uh, the image here will be displayed. Then next is, um, as soon as you can see the Explorer, then write a uh, look for the computer option. Then here it is being circled with red uh, pen, the computer option. So at that uh, option, you have to right click at the properties option. Then after clicking the or selecting the properties option, then you will be prompted with this picture or this result. This is the system specification of your computer. So in this case, uh, this is the system, uh, the system specification of the computer that I am currently using uh, with Windows 7 Ultimate as the operating system and uh, using AMD A4 7300 with 3.8 GHz. So meaning this is not uh, as low as that being mentioned earlier with uh, 1 gigahertz or 1 point something gigahertz so meaning it is at the middle then the installed memory or the ram is 6 gigabytes the system type is again 64 bit operating system uh, the one being encircled with red pen is the installed operating system so that is the windows 7 ultimate and the next picture shows the system, other system specifications in my computer, the processor, the installed memory, and the system uh, type. That's for this video. I hope you have learned something out of this. God bless us all and keep safe, everyone.